I trying to do today, just here a little, little random test on bounce on the sand iron. I've got different, lots of different sand irons, all um, 58 degrees, all about 62 lie, and all different with different bounces. Um, I've got a mic here to try and, so you can try and pick up the little differences in sound, how the club hits the, when the club hits the ground and then interacts with the ground and then hits the ball or other shots where you actually hit the ball first. So um, one of the first steps to recognize when you chip is you don't have to hit the ball first and actually more than 50% of the time you don't try and hit the ball first. Um, I'm going to try to hit every shot a similar distance. No, I'm actually going to try and hit every shot a similar speed. Um, connect each ball to the ground, ball and ground, where about my V here is sort of at aiming down towards the ball, and try and hit behind the ball about a, a half a ball behind, so that this section of the that's my goal is that this section just three quarters on the way back from the leading edge, this section here, um, a little bit towards the heel generally for me, um, hits the ground first. And that's the part that's going to bounce the club off the ground. Um, this is uh, a 58 with, um, a, it was about 10, maybe somewhere between 8 to 10 bounce. And this is sort of a, a general flat sole, so it's gen a general flat sole, no, no um, grinding as such, it's special, just a little bit of relief directly off the back, so a, a fairly common sole, um, so about, fairly common sole from about the year 2000, until we started getting triangle, triangle bounces, which all the different stuff, so we're going to try and do that, so hit the same spot on the uh, same spot on the green and then just try and bounce it just slightly so I get a little push into the ground and then a small click hitting the hitting just sort of normal shots normal bounce shots for me where the hands are only very very slightly forward with a, a very slight shaft lean so we go back to that so if this has got 10 bounce on it from the leading edge to the back edge of the sole, if that's 10 degrees and we lean the shaft 10 degrees then we'll have no effective bounce action, we're just trying to hit all the whole flat part but then this part of the club gets, starts to interact with the grass and everything, it's sort of flubby shots and the ball goes nowhere because the grass will get caught in the face early if you hit the ball a little bit like that. You can actually disperse some grass in this section because it's higher up the ground and therefore when it bounces, the grass is away and then you can actually ball hit the face cleanly because this this part here will disperse the grass away from it hit. That's the general idea for the normal chip on down grain surfaces. So that was a night that was actually just spot on for what I wanted. You just want a, a little bit of bounce, a little bit of forward lean. That one was hit slightly fatter, maybe for a mil to a half a mil, and you definitely heard a more of a, a, a thump than the click of the ball. That was slightly on the side of ground and ball together. Those shots always go lower and they spin more. That one I like, that one's there's just a little bounce and then click. So that's the general, that's that, that's that club, normal club. I'm gonna go from more bounce to less bounce. So I'll go for the heaviest bounce club that I just sort of made up to see. This is, a, no idea how much, it's like an old McGregor 52, and I just bounced it to 58, so I'll say it's somewhere close to 14. Bounce, it's got a lot of bounce, so if I try and hit the same spot, let's see what the ball flight does, and see what the sound changes. Pretty nice club, similar shot. Pretty difficult to, this is a nice club to chip with. 
Okay, that's what happens sometimes with a lot of bounce. Got the ball first. Obviously, there's a little different, little different thing happening here with when you bend the loft of the sand irons, you change them to offset or onset. So this one will be a little bit onset because I've added loft to it, so the leading edge is forward of the of the hosel or the shaft a little bit with respect to the other clubs. So that's that's the shot that I was sort of looking at. The one that goes a little bit higher and it's definitely got less spin just due to the fact that when you're hitting it there's a lot more room here. The leading edge is higher off the ground so the bounce is bouncing up on the getting more closer to the equator of the ball, so definitely getting less spin, imparting less backspin on the ball. So this, this type of club, as you see, is great for soft surfaces, um, definitely for down grain type of shots or less Bermuda style grasses, and um, work wonderfully early mornings with dew. Um, you can use this, a very, this is more of the style of bounce that I think most club golfers should be using. Uh, easier out of the bunkers and um, you can just hit the ball without trying to lean the shaft too forward and chip like this you can chip in a more of a neutral position and and without using a, and then you'll get a lot of elevation and very unusual to to hit skinny shots on the soft surfaces because it's got lots of bounce a safer club. This one's a long bounce, a long bounce club, flat. It's an old Gary Player, one of the clubs that he used to use. Um, very long here, lots of bounce again, close to 14. Really good for bunkers. Um, this style of uh, chipping club is good for people who like to lean the shaft a little bit more, a bit more of that Phil Mickelson hinge and hold sort of idea because we've still got a little bit of bounce even if we move the shaft forward. So if we've got 14, we can lean the shaft about 10. We've still got four degrees bounce on it. So I'm still gonna go back to the same shot where I'm just gonna hit with that V, aiming at the ball at impact. And there's a lot of bounce there that's come up here, quite a big click as the ball's hitting thin. So if I actually wanna get the same ball flight as my first sand iron, I'll have to lean the shaft forward to get the same sort of, and there it is. There's, that's, so that's um, that's a very useful type of club too, even though it's illegal. Um, for the club golfer, we haven't tried any lob shots or any different shots, just trying a standard shot. I'm gonna go to, um, I might move over to something that's more like this. So this is this is the most club where actually the bounce is probably only about six, five or six. But it's a, it is longer with a little bit of relief here, but trying to be as flat as possible here. So try to bounce it here. So this one is a, a club that you'd probably use for firmer surfaces with very little grain and still works okay with the bunkers because you have enough length of bounce to get some uh, movement out of the sand for the bunker shot. So we do the same shot. This shot you would think would go a little bit higher because I'm hitting more underneath the ball due to the fact that it's got less bounce from this side to the leading edge, so I'm hitting more of the face and less close to the equator and more underneath the ball, so the ball gets some elevation. But this club is very difficult for when the grass is extremely grainy because this leading edge can get in the way and then therefore you can get a lot of miss hits and the ball doesn't travel very far. Club very difficult for grainy surfaces, but really good for firm surfaces and firm bunkers. Um, this is a little bit of a hybrid in between. Long, a long sole, but not as, but not that much bounce, more closer to seven. And I think this is a really nice club for, for everybody in all different um, surf, uh, all different grasses. Um, it's got a little bit more bounce than that last previous one, so, and it's a little easier to hit. Definitely going lower with the same type of shot because 
I'm heading a little closer to the equator. That's about, that's about right. Now we move on to, or well, maybe move on to some uh, different type of grinds and why they actually work and why they're designed that way. So I've got, got um, different clubs here. So from first, so this one is the, this new style of, I really don't know what it's called, TS grind. And so the front edge has got a lot of bounce, this section here, um, but it's very thin. So the bounce back of the surface um, doesn't, there's not a lot of bounce back of the surface of soft areas because there's not a lot of surface area to bounce off. Uh, if you lean forward a lot with a lot of shaft lean, then you've got there, uh, you just got only that little bit of surface to hit off. Um, but if you lean it back and have the shaft lean backwards at a dress and open, therefore you can use this section here on the back and um, then the leading edge is not as far off the ground when you open it up. That's the idea. If you try to imagine that this type of grind, which is thin, but has some bounce, if you open it up, that leading edge is actually very far off the ground. So that's the idea of this. Very difficult to, not, you know, difficult in bunkers that are soft, this type of surface, because there's no surface area to bounce the club back off the sand. Um, but really good for uh, tight lies, the firm and non grain grass. Um, you can hit some really cool, wonderful lob shots with that style. Um, I find them quite difficult to chip with, but they do, they do have performance, um, good performance ideas or conditions. This is more of the style of an old Cleveland style, which is sort of more of a Tiger Woods style, where it's a little bit more rounded. There is bounce from here to there. It rounds off the back, it rounds off on this section here so you can open it up. So this style of club and its bounce is designed so that however you open it up or lean it, there is almost the, the same amount of bounce acting on the club, um, the same amount of surface area of bounce acting on the club. So if you open it up, you've still got that rounded part. If you have a square, you've got the middle of the rounded part. If you lean it forward a little bit, you've got this front action of rounded part, which in a way, it acts like this one, but this one is sort of, in a way, only has two types of shot. It's as a, a standard leaning shot to use this bounce, or it has a very open. I find it difficult in the middle ground because this part here is this top of the triangle. It becomes a bounce, and because the surface area of that part is just a point, it actually doesn't bounce well or much off um, any type of soft surface. This one here is a one that I did myself, it's got extreme, extremely small amount of bounce at the front edge. And then if you open it up, the, uh, there's a flat area right towards the back, which only gets the leading edge off the ground of, uh, as minimal as possible, really, without cutting the whole back of the club off. Um, I left some toe, toe bounce on it, for therefore you can still get bunker shots out of it, but you probably need to have a sort of a more upright um, upright shaft angle to use some bounce, although it definitely works off um, firm bunkers and it's fantastic for really for really firm surfaces for lob shots and the hard greens. Um, almost a design for extreme links golf. And this one is similar to the TS but just a little less a little less uh, aggressive on the relief grind at the back. Which made Square, which I like, just gives a surface, a flat surface area to make the bounce of the lob shot. So you want it, so it's not an angular bounce. And then there's a middle, small middle section, and then there's this front bounce where you can just sort of lean it a little bit, clip it off. So we hit some shots and see what the raw plates look like. So I start with the a thinner sole, 58.8. Um, so I think this is a designed sort of by Oosthausen type club. It's, it's thin, so it's, it's probably very good for all round, um, lovely grass, bent grass style club. Yeah, a lot of bounce there. Hit that a little, I connected the ground maybe towards the toe, so I used a lot more bounce. I hit it in a good spot. Yeah, a lot of bounce, high, soft, not a lot of spin because of off the tight lies. Could change the style of hitting. 
to just lean this one forward, it'll go lower and then you'll get some spin on it like that. Um, that's probably how he likes to chip, that's why it's designed that way. I'll go with one that's just more of the Tiger Woods style, just a rounded sole. These are, these are always really nice. You have to be quite good at chipping with these because you've got to know what type of bounce you're going to get. Yeah, that's nice. That works well. So it sort of bounces the same every time. Hit that. Didn't quite get the bounce out, hit ball, and that's the problem. Hit the ball and the ground together. Same type of shot again. That's really nice. Good, good amount of spin. So this is where I'll probably... Now I'll move forward so that all these will work. I'll try the, try the one with really no bounce to do. Go myself. And this one goes a lot higher, a lot spinnier. Hard, but that was quite a nice shot. This one should be very similar. The one that I grounded in three triangle sections. So that's just coming off that middle flat part of the bounce. Okay, now uh, probably to show up what's going on here, I'll take the, oh here we go, one more with the black one, should do a similar stuff. It's just a very small amount of, it went quite high, no spin, because that's that extreme amount of bounce that's hitting at the front section. Same again with the Oosthausen style club, you'd have to lean it forward to get the right amount of bounce, so you don't hit up close to the equator. Interesting type of design, those clubs. Um, so now I'm gonna try and hit sort of a higher shot and demonstrate where the bounce really comes into effect. I use a, the, I use a general, a general one, eight, flat a sole, first one. So it's an eight, 58, flat sole, um, and a nice medium to wide sole. We'll open it up all about the same. Can try and hit these ones with the shaft vertical, straight up and down, a little bit of open. Maybe a little bit steeper to get that bounce, but trying to hit right behind the ball, exact same spot as the other ones. Okay, so that was nice. Just a little bit of bounce, nice bit of height. Now we'll go to one that's ever same type of sole, almost exactly, but just with less bounce. And hopefully this one goes a little higher. Yeah, just a little higher. Then we'll go to. Um, We'll go to the black one to try and demonstrate how it's supposed to work. It's because it's got the, the TS sole, so you're supposed to lay it back on that, that back triangle part of the bounce. Yeah, I find it nice, but I still find that the surface area is so small that you're not getting a much lift off the, off the bounce section. Quite easy to maybe go under them, which is the idea of the club, to go under them, but I'd rather a little bit of bounce so I can push the ball up into the air. Tiger Woods style one, which is the rounded bounce. This one should work, should just work the same as all the other clubs. So they come out with a lot of spin, a little bit spinnier. Probably that's due to the design, fall, falling off relief on the back. Got under the ball really well, lovely club. This one's the same, the same club, just with more relief off the back. So this one, should be a sort of more of an advanced advanced club you've got to make sure you hit that section but I like the way that that's flat so I got some bounce back off nothing in between but underneath the ball but with bounce on the way up so it's really cool now this one is the sort of the extreme amount of back off the club so we're going to do the same shot and this should um, be quite cool this type of shot yeah, it goes much higher. Um, hit another one. I got it pretty well. I think I got a little bit of ball first. If you can hear that connection, didn't get, didn't quite get the ground first to get that click. That one's better. So that's a little click, little bounce off, and then clicks it up. And that one goes even higher. So um, the way I the way I see it is, um, if you want to hit a high shots you uh, need, if you want to hit high shots and use bounce, you need, you need less of the bounce and open it up. Oh, I'll explain it in a different way. Basically all that happens is, is that if you have this angle and this angle, all that happens is once you open them up, different parts of the back hits. 
So if you want to open it up and this gets higher off the ground, well then you're going to hit closer to the equator and hit the ball over to the green. Um, all shots that are hit with the shaft just forward, the shaft just leaning forward, but somewhere where your thumb or is just aiming at the ball or just forward of it, you want enough bounce so that you get some uh, leeway in your in your contact zone so that you can bounce the club just before the ball and then hit up. I'm going to hit one shot just um, first before. Um, uh, what happens if the grass is grainy? Um, well, that's actually an easy explanation, but an extremely hard shot to play. Is if the if the grass is growing in towards in towards your direction of play, and it's sitting like that with the grass in front, well, you can't play the bounce shot generally because you're going to catch all this grass, and the ball won't fly very far and to judge the distance in the flight it's going to be extremely difficult because the grass is going to get in the way of the grooves. So the only real way actually is to play an explosion type shot where you actually use the grass to throw it up a bit like a bunker or you need to actually you need to lean the shaft forward get rid of the bounce and then connect the ball somewhere that's just that makes this leading edge above the blades of grass or soil to hit the ball so the ball will go very low um, it'll feel like a thin, sh a thin shot. Um, it will spin a little bit, but the flight will be extremely low. And if you miss that connection, actually it's just a duff shot. So that's why it looks so terrible when, um, when you do it in front of your friends or on TV, because it is so very close to a very perfect shot. Um, but the flum, is, the flum or the duff is so very perfect to the perfect shot. So you have to get the shaft leaning forward like this and all, almost aiming just under the equator of the ball and hitting just above the first groove, somewhere between above the first groove and the second groove, and sort of just clipping it off like that. And that's sort of the only way to hit those shots, unless you go in very aggressively and try and hit a, a sort of a, a, an explosion shot using the grass. That's about all I've got for bounce.